All right, cheers. Yep. So Shine is back. We took a little break. Um, cheers to... Um, I drink already. Because <laughs> um, I, I, I stumbled, and so you... Okay. Um, hard conversations mm -hmm. about things that um, may open eyes. All right. Cheers to that. Um, so as you guys remember, this is Dave, Doc Dave, which... I like to call him. We've um, known each other a long time. We're partners. And every once in a while, we have some really good conversations when we have time at work. So I thought it would be um, nice to have one of those conversations here. And I was thinking back to, and I'm sure you remember this, Eddie Murphy did this skit on um, Saturday Night Live. I don't know if you guys remember this. And he basically dressed up like a white man and he went through New York City to see if he would be treated differently um, as a white man. Do you remember that? Yeah. It was hilarious. Like, you know, white people are having parties on the bus without him, and he got, like, a free newspaper. And, um, and at, the, at the time, I mean, it was groundbreaking. It was, it, was, it was, you know, humorous, but at the same time, you know, you always wonder what, would, what is different or how do other people go through their life differently um, when they're not like me. And so probably one of the more opposite people I could ever have is you as a white man <laughs> to have that discussion with. I understand. So um, I, I guess I kind of wanted to ask you first. I mean, do you feel... So so we're going to talk about race. Right. We're going to talk about race. we're going to be race. open and honest. Absolutely. And as friends having a conversation... Mm -hmm. um, I just want to, you know, from a political correctness mm -hmm. kind of thing, I just want to talk. Right. I don't, if something comes out wrong, I don't, my disclaimer is that I don't mean it. Um, if I say something I need to educate it on, I'm good with that. Right. And that's the kind of conversations that we always have. And I'm not um, here to speak on behalf of every African American woman. Nor can I speak for every so, white man. But at the same time, what's it like being a white man? <laughs> I mean, do you I notice the difference? I've never been a white woman. I've never been a black man. I've never right. been a... Um, so, mm -hmm. no. I mean, the answer is I, I don't... I've never placed myself in a category or looked at mm -hmm. myself as being a certain um, race or being mm -hmm. a certain gender. And part of it is, and I think, you know, as I tried to think about some of the things that we might talk about right. today... I was kind of whittling this all down to upbringing. You know, I was lucky enough to have mm -hmm. parents that, and I don't know if we've ever talked about this, um, and, and I could be wrong, and I, I can check with my brothers on this, but I'm, I'm pretty sure that when um, my dad, we, we lived in Quincy, we grew up in Quincy, mm -hmm. we moved there probably when I was one, mm -hmm. and he was a dentist, and when he started his dental practice, he was one of the only, if not the only, dentist that would see black people. I did not know that about you. Yeah. So, really? I didn't, it wasn't anything in my home. Right. That he went to Evanston High School. There were blacks in his high mm -hmm. school. So it was, I don't think it was anything that was in his home mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. that was malicious either. I mean, it just, mm -hmm. so having had the benefit of growing up with a father who, I don't, you know, I don't, mm -hmm. That's, these are people I don't care. And we would be literally on the street and somebody, black, white, didn't matter, would walk up to him and say, I want to thank you so much for taking care of me. Wow. Okay, that's powerful as and a child a black man to see that. Up. Right. And we had right. we had a few black kids. Honestly, I went to predominantly white grade mm -hmm. school. There were a few blacks um, in our school. Carla, I'm not going to try not to say last names. Mm -hmm. um, Carla was a young girl in our class, um, probably from the fourth grade on. I don't think we had any black guys. There were a couple of black guys ahead of us and there were some black kids kind of mm -hmm. behind us. But I, mean, I didn't I mean I just I didn't stop and think about it. So to your original question, right. I guess I never thought of my I just thought of myself as an average person. That's interesting. Your so did you did your dad ever have purposeful conversations like or or in your family about Yes, there are people different from us. We treat everybody. I mean, did you ever have those conversations? You know, I'm, I'm sure we did. Mm -hmm. um, I remember um, in the early 70s, there were some race things going on in the high school. Mm -hmm. 
and um, I'm sure we had you know conversations about that at home. That mm -hmm. hey, uh, you know, what what is that all about? Mm -hmm. What you know, you guys know better than that. Right. Um, and if I look back at it, I um, there was an incident when I was in junior high school that I'll, I'll never forget. There was. Um, one of the black kids, the guys that went to our school, Jan, again, I'm going to try not to use last names, um, not from money. Right. Um, he was from poverty. But, uh, and Jan was, um, didn't, Jan didn't smile a lot. Jan mm -hmm. was just somebody that, and whether he had a chip on his shoulder, I don't know. Mm -hmm. But somebody that you could tell you just weren't going to mess with Jan. Right. You're older than me. I went to junior high school and then, um, at that time it was just seventh and eighth grade in this big building. All of the grade schools filtered in. Mm -hmm. And there was a white kid, um, Harold, who these guys, and again, lower income. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so there was the, there were, you could see it in the hallway, there was racial tension. Mm -hmm. And we were in gym class one day and um, our gym teacher, who I didn't know it until after the fact, is it was a black belt in karate. Mm -hmm. These guys got into a fight. I've never right. seen a fight <laughs> like this. And they were going at it. And they mm -hmm. were probably about seven rows up in the bleachers. And um, Mr. Mass came running across the gym, mm -hmm. leaped like Superman in the air, grabbed them both by the head, separated mm -hmm. them. And that's when I really realized, whoa, mm -hmm. this is this is hatred. Mm -hmm. You know, this is maybe this stuff. So I don't think, you know, we had conversations, but because... None of us were in a situation mm -hmm. where um, there was trouble. I don't. He, I think he knew he didn't have to harp on it too much. And and we were kids that followed by example. Right, right. And his example was the conversation. And it, it's interesting you say that because I grew up here in Springfield, and <clears throat> for the most part, most of the schools I went to were predominantly white. So um, I had a different type of high school where I knew I was. You knew you were different. I knew I was different. Like, you never really felt like you fit in over here or over here. Um, and I remember... Was that you? I'm going to interrupt you. I, so keep your memory. Was that right. you kind of your own insecurity? Well, or did, do you feel like a, a majority of kids... I think it was a little bit of both. both. I mean, granted, I mean, dramatic teenage girl, sure. obviously. Um, but when I was in school, you know, we were really pushed to be in the higher academic level. And just the way it worked is most of my classmates were the the white kids and um, a lot of the African Americans you know they just weren't in a lot of my classes so I didn't have a lot of interaction except for when um, you know I played sports and things like that so I didn't necessarily feel feel like I fit in over here I didn't feel like I fit on over there so it was it was a little different high school experience and I had an incident, and I want to say it was my junior year, I had a really good friend that we hung out and we played basketball, it was a guy friend, we did everything together, kind of liked each other, you know, um, and I'll never forget somebody wrote nigger lover on his locker, because obviously somebody saw that we were spending mm -hmm. a lot of time together, and that was, I mean, the, the, the switch just flipped for me at that point, like, wow, I guess maybe I am not as integrated into this high school experience as I thought. There is somebody out there that thinks that about me. Sure. Um, and it, well, and I'll say this first, when they wrote it on his locker at first, I said, Jeff, are you like cheating on me? Like, who are they talking about? I, I admit at first I was so naive that I didn't, I was like, well, I, you know, we don't use that word. I don't hear that word. Right. I didn't know who, you know, what they meant. But he and I's relationship changed dramatically. Really, and so it, it was. It hurt my feelings a lot, sure. and and I think that was one of the times where I really felt um, my uniqueness in this kind of in this community. You know, you go to a restaurant. There's times you know you're the only African American in a restaurant, or depending on your setting, and so I know I'm always cognizant of that. I don't know why I continue to do that, and when we go to a more diverse city, I'm like, oh my. Gosh, look at all these wonderful, colorful people. Um, so that that's that, something that, that I notice. Um, I think, to a degree, uh, whether we admit mm -hmm. it or not, most of us care what people think. Well, sure. And when you're different, mm -hmm. you're thinking that what they're thinking has to do with your difference right, right away because of an appearance versus what you think of me right. after a conversation. Right. 
Well, and as I've gotten older, obviously, I don't really care. Well, <laughs> so but, interesting that you say that. Right. One of Chloe's friends mm-hmm. happens to be African-American. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, black. And uh, they went to college together. She moved out east, um, had some problems. And um, I know Chloe was kind of trying to keep in touch with her. Mm-hmm. And ultimately, things I think were okay. And one of the things that, I don't know, she, maybe she posted on social mm-hmm. media somewhere was... Something to the effect that um, those that matter don't mind, and those that mind don't matter. Mm-hmm. But I think it takes a certain amount of um, maturity right. to get to that point. There are, right. you know, we have insecurities when we're young, and finally we get to the point where, you know what, mm-hmm. I'm me, and the people that I like get me. Um, I, you know, and the people that don't like me, I can't control what mm-hmm. they think or why they don't like me. But if they don't like me, uh, I can't. Right. can't let it hurt me. But it comes back to those conversations and even the modeling that your parents did because there's that converse, right, of the people who maybe didn't model yeah. those same and I think that's attributes. And that, I think that's, that's probably where we are now. Right. A little bit in society. I think a lot of it. Yeah. I mean, yeah. really. Yeah. Because all of the things that, you know, they talk about, you know, mm-hmm. everything that you need to know, you learn by the time you're in kindergarten or you right. in kindergarten. Right. And I think that's a lot of that is, mm-hmm. you know, your um, your formative years, those first few years when you're at home. You know, mm-hmm. are we as husband and wife shouting each other, calling mm-hmm. each other names? Mm-hmm. Are we, you know, in the security mm-hmm. of our own home, you know, making fun of or talking mm-hmm. bad about it? And whether it's using words that we've yeah. not yeah. maybe known previously that were hurtful, mm-hmm. um, and then obviously the, you know. The cycle just continues and continues. Um, but you would think after all these decades, you know, things would get better. Um, I think there are more, there's some that are way more overt. I mean, I know I have conversations with my kids still about, hey, remember, you know, as an African American, you know, you, um, some of your actions and words are going to be seen differently than your counterparts. And you know, whether I should be doing that, I don't know. I mean, do you have those conversations? I think not, I do, but not kids? to, mm-hmm. it's, not a, it's not a race based. A race based. Hey, as a white, whatever, mm-hmm. guy, girl, um, you, you're, I don't know, uh, going to your practice and, mm-hmm. you know, you can't, you've got to be careful about how you say things around the black kids. No, I mean, mm-hmm. it's about your uh, we're all people, and mm-hmm. how you treat other people matters, and, and mm-hmm. what comes out of your mouth, and the way it comes mm-hmm. out of your mouth, and that's that's a lot of our conversations. Mm-hmm. Hey, your words and your inflections, you know, choose them the best that you can, right. but recognize that however somebody receives them mm-hmm. is in large part how you put them out there, and um, the idea is that we're all in this together. I mean, that's the hate to borrow Do from you... the Volkswagen commercial. But... <laughs> Do you feel, um, I mean, what do you think about the term white privilege? And, and I bring so that up. About that, no? Yeah, well, because I know, and, and you and I have had conversations, and I know sometimes I get very frustrated at work, and I'll be like, it's only because I'm a black woman they're doing this to me. They wouldn't do that to you, Dave. And I, I, disclaimer, I'm not speaking ill about my system. We're just having a general conversation. Um, and most of the time, it's it is right. lighthearted. I right. Think. It's totally lighthearted. But, I mean, do you believe in white privilege, or do you feel like... So here's the thing. I didn't understand. I, I mm-hmm. watched a show that Dr. Phil um, had on. You watched like, Dr. Phil? Her, Kelly had it on. Oh, okay. And we were watching. Just had, Another and, and disclaimer. White, but yeah. <laughs> but I mean, when do I have time to watch Right. I know, right? Um, <laughs> although, he's had some interesting things on. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. So anyway, white privilege came up. If I'm going to be honest with you, um, prior to that show, um, it, it, the term really bothered me mm-hmm. because I don't feel mm-hmm. that I was ever privileged, mm-hmm. um, that I got something because I was white. I right. feel like, um, you worked hard. Were, yeah. Well, and mm-hmm. my dad started off with nothing and, right. me and I had, right. you know, a couple mm-hmm. pairs of pants and a couple pairs of shoes and we had, mm-hmm. we weren't rich going through right. grade school and I didn't, I knew of kids who, you know, had money, but right. so I, I, it was always, Hey, you know, our message was you got to work for what. Mm-hmm. You know, you get, you're gonna, mm-hmm. you have to work hard in school, you have to, you're gonna play sports you want to get, you're gonna have to work hard, relationships, you know, you gotta treat people. So, all the basic things. And so, it was kind of like, you know, I don't 
like that. And then when it was explained, I, I, I get it. I don't think it's a, I don't think it's a 100% across the board, mm -hmm. everybody, but I get where it, it definitely does happen. Mm -hmm. I think there are definitely aspects of society, mm -hmm. um, whether I like it or not, where I may have been in a situation where I benefited. Mm -hmm. um, and that makes me mad because again, I didn't set about trying to benefit from being right. white. Right. I'm just having a little more. Right. But yet, okay, that's not cool. And then I started kind of drilling down more and I thought, but you know, we can spread that a little bit further from a privileged perspective. Um, you know, could I potentially be privileged if I lived in a different society? Um, I don't know, I was royalty in India and I have Indian royalty. And you have privilege. entitlement that maybe yeah. others. Yeah. Didn't so I, have. you know, I think there's. Um, I get where it originated, and I get that it does happen. Um, do I think it happens, you know, all the time? No, but do I think um, it should ever happen? No, I don't. I mean, and it gets, you know, again, from a race perspective, I don't care, you know, what color we are. I don't care what gender we are. Um, people, opportunity should go to the people who step up for whatever reason and are in the right place at the right time have earned right but the and, and let me throw this out to you i mean i think we have to understand i mean there's just that huge article about springfield the disparity in income education yes and um, the thing right now, trauma. yeah it, i mean it's crazy so you know is there some way to lift up those that maybe have not had the same i mean i grew up you talk about privilege. I mean, I was like, you know, a Cosby kid. I, I mean, I admit, you know, I did not grow up, you know, impoverished. You know, I always, I had every opportunity so, of education and jobs and resources that some of my counterparts did not have. Or, and again, I don't, you know, I don't yeah. know how long we're going to have this conversation, right. but how far back do you go in your lineage to mm -hmm. where, mm -hmm. no, I mean, you were, you know, so to speak, on the outside looking in right. as a black Right. You know, well, my mother ancestors. and my my mother and grandmother um, definitely oh, your paved I'm that sure way. From a, oh, yeah. absolutely paved that struggle. So and not that your mom didn't. I'm just saying from a time perspective. Right, right, right. Grew up in a time when right. You know. Um, so how do we make it better? Do you have any? Uh, you know what I want to do? I want to I want to dress you up like a black man, like we did, <laughs> like Eddie Murphy did, and I want to like. Transplant you just to see if you notice a difference. Where would you transplant me? What I think, kinds of places? So I think I would transplant you. I, I think I would have you walk down the street downtown just okay. to see if people approach you differently or... How would you um, dress me? Well, I don't know. I mean, I, I think what would be most important is just kind of be average t-shirt, jeans. Okay, maybe. so I'm just saying, if you're going to put me in Right, right, right. It's, it's going to be different. Yeah. But I think there might be some nuances that are different... Than if you walk down the street the way you are now versus and I totally mm -hmm. I totally agree with you. Mm -hmm. the, the difference would be right now I'm not thinking about it as a white mm -hmm. as a person. Right. I happen to be white right. as a person. So you would be putting me in a situation where now you're asking me to pay attention. Where sure. if it was just me, maybe I wouldn't yeah. have caught it. But as a younger mm -hmm. black man, would mm -hmm. I have have definitely seen that. Mm -hmm. Because I'm still trying to figure out where I fit in, and you know, right. who's who as a, you know, as you graduate from high school, you're with this group. You get into college, you're with this group. When you graduate from college, you're not kind of on your own, and you're in with people who don't know you and who, you know, mm -hmm. are potentially sizing you up. So I have to ask you. Group. I have to ask you though. Am I your only black friend? Um, <laughs> what do you, in your heart of hearts, what do you think the answer is? I think so. No, I think no. I think you probably have a few people that you're still in contact with. Uh, I've never met yes. your other black friends, if you have some. No, I'll be honest with you. The mm -hmm. people that I grew up with, in, you know, if I'm being completely mm -hmm. honest, mm -hmm. I mean, do we have that many friends that we hang out with? No. no. I mean, we're just not big social people. Yeah. So part of it is that. Um, but do I have people that right now, if I picked mm -hmm. up the kids that I grew up with, mm -hmm. black kids that I grew up with, played sports with, mm -hmm. that if I picked up the phone mm -hmm. or said I was coming in town, uh, that... They would yeah. be excited, and then I would be excited. Mm -hmm. Yeah, when I went back to my, um, or 
when I was a senior, our basketball team won the state championship, and we had a reunion for that. Yeah. The guy I room with was my best black friend growing up. In I love school. it. I love so, it. Yeah. So, you know, and again, if we were to, have I talked to him for a couple of years? No, I haven't. But mm-hmm. again, if I pick up the phone and, or if I look on Facebook. There'd every still year, be that connection. Yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. his birthday's in March, my birthday's in April, and we send each other happy birthday. So it's kind of like guys, really. If I'm, yeah, you know, good point. You know, just whatever, <laughs> and all of a sudden you pick, you know, mm-hmm. my brothers, you know, I go months and months without talking to some of them, and you just go. Um, but I think. If you ask other black people that I'm around, mm-hmm. uh, if I treat them differently, mm-hmm. I'd love to hear that answer. Yeah, I would love to hear that too. I, I mean, knowing you, I know you don't. Um, you know, you're you have this unique experience, and and I wish everybody had the same upbringing and stories and 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 you know background that you do, because you know there's still I even had um, a few in our early years of practice that once they saw me and they knew I was black, they didn't want me to be their doctor. And this was like 18 years ago. So this is nobody now. And of course now I'm like, ha ha, (laughs) you lose. (laughs) But you know, they didn't know what I looked like and then they were like, oh, you're the doctor? I'm like, yeah. And they're like, oh. And like, I never saw them again, so. And then there are others that stuck with you and uh, right, absolutely. For absolutely. 18, 20 years. And, right. You know, no. Right. Um, but so that's some of that still sad. just does and, happen. And, mm-hmm. Again, to my point that, you know, who deep down who are those right. people? You know, right. Not, I'm not, I don't mean by name, but I mean, mm-hmm. what are they worth? Mm-hmm. And um, if they want to be like that, if they're going to act like that, I hate that it hurts other mm-hmm. people, you know, whether you're black, white. Um, uh, we do have some really good friends down in um, the. Belleville area, and I'm mm-hmm. blanking on the um, name of the town. They'd shoot me if they saw this. Um, <laughs> but anyway, maybe it's better that I don't say right, that. Right, so right, anyway, right, right. <laughs> he's Asian. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I don't, you know, it's about your um, commonalities. And I'm not talking about color, but mm-hmm. us. Mm-hmm. Uh, our commonality was medical school. Mm-hmm. I mean, we met in medical school. If it weren't for that, would I know you? I don't know. I mean, if we ended up in the same practice, would we mm-hmm. still probably be sitting here? Yeah, I think we're both the kind of people that would figure out how to make that connection and make right. it go. Um, and you get through, you know, from a sports perspective, you get through things in life with a group of people or, you know, one or two people. Um, and so, you know, at certain points, the connection you make. But um, how do you get people to be more willing to make a connection? Well, and, and that's where it is, because how do you step out of your box? You know, and we, we see all these um, stories of, oh, there was a black person in Starbucks and, they weren't buying anything and I felt like they were threatening. You know, how do you take that experience and maybe just say, hey, how are you? Are you waiting for somebody? Can I sit down and have a conversation with you? Where are you from? And I think there's always that flip side to those experiences that I would love to see more of. I think more so than that, honestly. Mm-hmm. Um, I think sometimes when you start a conversation, that can be awkward, but a smile and hello. Right. Really, just breaking the ice that way. I mean, and that's, for me, um, uh, I think that the, the first impressions, you never get a second chance to make a first mm-hmm. impression. So to smile at somebody, say hello, um, open a door. I don't care if you're black or white, right. open a door for you. And am I doing it only because I'm a white guy? I just go, wow, this person, the white, I like the white guy. So I'm like, <laughs> no, I mean, it is, it's, just, I don't, it's just real. Right. Um, but I think it's that, um, you know, what you give out comes back to you. Mm-hmm. I mean, if I'm walking around, and you know, um, there was a girl in our medical school class, Jean, black girl. Yes, I yes, I remember Jean. Um, and uh, Verna. Yeah. Got along great with those yep. two. Yep. At the end of medical school, one of them told me, do you know you're one of the only people mm-hmm. in this class that was nice to me? Yeah. Broke my heart. I mean, I didn't do it. Right, and granted, we had a class of 72. 72. I mean, you know, that's... It, it was very intimate. Shocked me. Yeah. And then she's the one who said that her grandmother said that to yeah. her, that what you give out comes back yeah. to you. I never heard that. And I, and again, I, you know, I'm not a person who does things um, to, to, uh, for mischievous reason, mm-hmm. for reason. Mm-hmm. You know, it's going to happen, it's going to happen. But mm-hmm. how do I, how can I be the best me that I can be? Right. And if you accept that, fine. And if you don't accept it, okay. I, you know, it's not because I didn't try. Mm-hmm. But why... 
why some people have that um, darkness in their heart that they, I don't know, I think, I really think it's upbringing. Mm -hmm. I think it's um, lack of um, experience. Some of it's just... Experience of diversity. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it doesn't have to be... But, and, and this conversation, like I said today, I was kind of thinking, oh, God, what's she going to ask me? She's going to put me on the button. <laughs> then I started thinking, you know, right, I, really, right. I have two granddaughters. How are we going to help them? I mean, yeah, I can model it, but... Right. And I guess the one cool thing... Um, do they have any... Do they have little black dolls you need to get your... Yeah, they do. Yes! They do. Give me a fist bump yeah. on that. And I, I and love you know that. And they don't play with them any differently. Like, it, right. Like the but that's what... It's, it's exposure. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, it's a good friend that she's done CrossFit with. Mm -hmm. It's a black woman, mm -hmm. um, and she would take Evie when she was little. Mm -hmm. So, and that was one of Evie's best buddies. Right. They would go talk and hang right. out. So I hope that that's what she remembers is that, uh, you know, it might have been different colors, but I, you know, right. I didn't. That's I, all the I same. didn't see that. I mean, she loved me, and we played, mm -hmm. and we had fun, and so. But I want her. How my thought was: How am I going to get around? her around black children mm -hmm. so that she knows that growing up it's not you know because um, when I play and when I mm -hmm. have fun and when I smile and I see that's what's that, important mm -hmm. well in any race really I mean I know we're focusing on African American but there's just so many wonderful colors true I that we have mm -hmm. my Asian friend but, um, mm -hmm. yeah. um, but it's just I, I think um kind of what you were getting at before. Why do we live in a society that we live in when, you know, some of these um, crazy laws that were in place for mm -hmm. years and years and years, and that, and it's, and this probably is going to come out wrong, and I hope you know what I mean, that we had to have a Martin Luther King actually right. do something. Right, to, right, to, to see to, what was very common address. sense yeah. and common decency. Yeah that we had to have such a huge movement. And that we still have that huge movement now. But but yeah, I love it. You know, and the fact that your granddaughter has a black baby doll, that just that just made my whole afternoon. Well, like the Barbie thing that she plays with, there's black Barbies and there's white Barbies. You're awesome. My, right back at you. My uh, white friend, Doc Dave. No, we're brother and sister. <laughs> oh yeah, you are, you are. <laughs> All right, we're gonna do this again. We're gonna have, uh, okay. we're gonna tackle a few more things. That's good. At some point, because I think it's good to have conversation. No, I agree, and, and I hope that through all of this, I, you know, um, I guess as I think back to all the things that we talked about, mm -hmm. you know, let's start this stuff at home. Let's right. sit down with our kids. Let's mm -hmm. sit down mm -hmm. with our grandkids. And to your point about how do you fix this, um, what if we had grandparents come into the school? and start talking about these things. So uh, black folks going into white mm -hmm. schools and you know, white folks going into black schools. And just sharing experiences yep. and communicating. Yep. And mm -hmm. as older people who are, mm -hmm. um, I hate to say it because I'm getting old, but you're kind of cute and harmless. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> right, right. You're not, your appearance is not right. something to be right. with. So. <laughs> All right. And I I've, I've already finished my old fashioned, so I'm going to have to have another stop. Much. Yeah, pretty much. Cheers. Love you. Thanks. Ya. Love you. See you.